What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode, a little early in the morning for a YouTuber, so bear with me. But today we are talking about the stagnation fallacy. I'm pumped because I just woke up, got on Twitter, and was reading about um, this article that is is by uh, Michael J. Casey that says, the fallacy that blockchain is stuck in one place from Coindesk. And the article starts by saying, the big one of the biggest rhetorical challenges blockchain advocates confront is something I'll call stasism. Their critics' false assumption that the technology is in stasis, that it will never reach its potential because in its current state, it's too cumbersome, expensive, or inefficient. And so th this is what I would call the stagnation fallacy. It's when people believe that technologies won't improve, that it won't get cheaper to transact in Bitcoin, that it, the network won't get more secure, that the currency won't get more volatile, and you know that it will get easier and there'll be better wallets and it'll get more seamless to transact transact, that more places will accept it. Look at a technology in its current state, I think you're going to miss a lot of the disruption. And this is a, a trend that I see not only with Bitcoin and blockchain, although that, that this is a perfect example, but also with Tesla and electric vehicles. And frankly, almost every time I'm investing or looking at a disruptive trend or technology, the reason why, the biggest reason why I feel like I get it, but nobody else sees it is because they are, view these markets as stagnant or view these industries as stagnant, when in reality, they're perpetually changing. And so this is the stagnation fallacy. And so with Tesla, you know, the stagnation fallacy is that their technology continues to improve at a vastly more rapid pace than the internal combustion engine. And so if you look at them today of what the internal combustion engine can do and what electric ve vehicles can do, or especially like two or three years ago, that it may have not made sense. But if you looked at the trajectory of how the costs were coming down for Tesla, how they had a $250,000 sports car, then they came out with the, you know, the $75,000 Model S, then we, now we have the $42,000 Model 3, not 35 yet, but we're definitely getting in that direction. And so, you know, and the, the backbone behind that has been that battery costs have continue to fall. So all those people who said that batteries were way too expensive and efficient and didn't work weren't taking into account the trajectory of improvements in that line of technology, essentially the rate of change, the pace of innovation. That is what you should be focused on. And the pace of innovation, and oftentimes people just don't assume there's no innovation or no change at all. So not only should you be worried about what, what change is occurring, but you should be worried about how fast that change is occurring. And another random industry that I'm super bullish on that no, not enough people are bullish on, in my opinion, um, that because of the stagnation fallacy is indoor farming, hydroponics. This is something that I, at, in my previous job at a startup, I worked briefly in like in a food distribution company working, you know, visiting huge farms like Aero Farms, one of the world's largest indoor farms, like got a tour, learned about their technology. You know, these companies are doing incredible things um, that are, you know, totally revolutionizing the way to grow food. And people aren't, and everyone's like, oh, but it's way too expensive. It takes way too much energy. It's never really going to catch on. The food's not that good. They're they're totally missing the boat on how fast, um, A, you know, uh, energy is one of the biggest inputs for hydroponics. I think that's going renewable and going cheaper. And so the emissions of the entire systems approach for hydroponic farming is improving by the day. Then on top of that, we also have the fact that, you know, automation or labor is one of the biggest costs in, in, in hydroponics is actually farming. You know, we can automate more and more of that by the day with robotics. And so I just see this trend of hydroponics improving in quality and getting cheaper um, at the same time as soil farming gets way more expensive because climate change starts to have, you know, these very odd impacts. For instance, when I was working for this food company, we would work with farmers all the time. And like even working with them, they get the sense that like these minor changes in climate, like the winter starts a little bit later or maybe a little bit earlier, can have huge impacts on their crop yields. And like, for instance, one season I was working in a certain region in New York, like nobody had carrots because like, I, I guess the winter wasn't long enough or it was too long or something like that. And just nobody could grow carrots that year. And usually everybody has carrots here. And so I think that's going to start happening to more and more crops. Look at the price of avocados. And so, you know, if you take into account all the change that's happening in that industry, it's really easy to see where this is going and why hydroponics will take so much market share. But if you assume that everything's stagnant, that the that you know soil farming is stagnant, that hydroponic technology is stagnant, then you won't see this disruption. So anyway, this is my little early morning rant on the stagnation fallacy because it's one of my favorite things in business. You know, when you're analyzing a new technology, don't look at what it can do today. Look at what its potential can be in the future and how fast is it changing and making progress to get to that potential end state. And I think this is a super important th lens to look at Tesla through, to look at Bitcoin through, to look at Amazon through. You know, is their package delivery going to continue to get cheaper? Are they going to continue to offer more things? Are they going to get smarter at, at serving you different products or ads? It, like everything, everything is constantly changing. And in the era of hyper change, if things are accelerating faster than ever and disrupt, getting disrupted faster than ever, then the stagnation fallacy is only going to get, get like, 
be more incorrect than ever. So yeah, that's kind of my two cents. Um, anyway, this is hyperchange, the stagnation fallacy. It's a phrase that I totally made up, but I love and I use it all the time in investing. So you should use it and let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I, is this BS? Did this rant make sense to you? Huge shout out to our Patreon producers, supporters as always for funding the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Yo, so I lied because I have one more idea, which is I, I just got out from the camera, but my, so the point is every technology starts out Every new disruptive technology starts out too expensive, not working well enough. You know, every, this is the rule with life with everything. You know, whenever you, you start a new skill that you're you're not good at, like like everybody sucks at everything before they practice it. You know, it's the same with the new technology. It's gonna, but when it's a lab experiment, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be scalable. It's not gonna work. But then finally you keep iterating, you keep improving, and then that's how things get done. And so it's really important to keep with this lens that every technology will start not being ready for prime time. And so if you just assume that because it's not ready for prime time today, you will buy the stagnation fallacies rule, miss every big disruption. And so that's just, yeah, last two cents.